Hey everyone, welcome to episode 44. My name is Keshav and I'm the producer. Today's conversation is with Jude St. Fleur, who is a Canadian Armed Forces veteran, entrepreneur, and military professional turned financial professional. He joined Sam to discuss his transition from the armed forces into the business world and his journey from an insurmountable credit card debt to becoming a financial advisor. They both discussed their uh, journey to, to, be, to knowing each other through the Prince's Trust and also shared some networking tips. If you're looking to know more about the Prince's Trust and what that is all about, I've linked that down in the description, including some contact details for Jude if you want to reach out and connect with him. Thanks and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome, Jude St. Fleur. I got uh, permission, everybody, from Jude to do the hard R on his last name. But Jude, how do I, how would I do this if I was, you know, more fluent in French? It would be St. Fleur. St. Fleur. Okay. I yeah. will. I aspire to that. <laughs> welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me, Samantha. It's, uh, it's an honor to be uh, on your episode today. Oh my gosh, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Um, we are going to get rocking and rolling, but first I want to ask you, because mm -hmm. we met in June and you had our famous Haligonian Donaire. So yes. I would like to know on a scale of zero to 10, with zero being um, you wouldn't scrape it off your food if you were star like starving, or 10, like that was the most delectable, delicious thing ever. Where do you rate our Haligonian Donaire? <laughs> well, since it was my first time and I had to make the trip to Halifax to actually get it, so uh, I will give it, uh, hmm, because I have exotic taste, so I will give it a five, because I'm like, okay, man. <laughs> Meh, but it passed. Meh. <laughs> yeah, it passed. Yeah, no, no, no. In all honesty, it was pretty good, right? So it was, uh, you, you do have the reputation and uh, I agree. I like, I'm a foodie, I like food. So yeah, um, yeah, all I jokes aside. Yeah, I had to do it. All jokes aside, it was pretty good. <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, um, how would you describe like what goes into the donair? <laughs> um, <laughs> all I know is that shaved meat, which I think it's probably corned beef. Uh, I saw some tomatoes in there and uh, onions and that famous sauce, which I have no idea what that is, but it's, uh, yeah, that donaire sauce. Uh, yeah. I, I don't and know would you thing. describe the donaire sauce as as uh, salty or? No, it was like kind of, kind of on the sweet side. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you have this pita with this shaved meat, this onions, yeah. tomatoes, and a sweet, um, like, yeah. So, yeah, uh, no. So, uh, I don't anyways, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get lots of hate from this. I am not a donor fan, <laughs> um, but like I appreciate them every once in a while, and I'll have a bite, and I'm like, okay, yeah. I appreciate this. It's it's nice, but um, yeah, I'm not clamoring. It's not my yeah, no, it's not something for every day. No, so it was good for the for, to try it, but then I'm like, nah, I've, uh, I'm gonna stick with my food. What I know, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So. We met in June and yeah. um, we were able to kind of, you know, share a donor or, you know, um, you know, share some space over donors, but we had actually met earlier in that week. So uh, do you want to describe a little bit about um, how we met and then we'll take it back to the beginning? Uh, yes, pretty much uh, I participated uh, in a book, uh, well, book camp called the Princess Trust that was at uh, Dalhousie University. Uh, so for uh, military veterans that are going into entrepreneurship, so Samantha was one of the teacher or presenter on one of our uh, classes, which was on accounting. And it was fascinating that the, the way she was presenting, she was so hyper and she really sparked that <laughs> presence in, in the room. So I felt like that connection, like, oh, well, she knows what she's talking about. She seems like pretty go-getter. And I like that, like people that are spontaneous and, you know, not afraid to to look dumb in front of everybody. But yeah, yeah after that, I'm like, oh, I have to, to meet her at, by any way, shape or form. So there was, I talked to her after the class. Well, talked to you after the class, pretty much. And then said, hey, I, I like what you were doing. And yeah, so, uh, uh, I'm in the financial industry. I'm trying to see and talk with the accounting. And uh, it seems like you're a pretty, a pretty good source. 
Um, and then that was that was the end of it. And we met again at a um, little event that was planned and with a glass of wine. And I saw Samantha again. I'm like, hey, Samantha, remember me? We met like kind of was like 24 hours later. Um, and yeah, chat a little bit. Nothing came out of it. And a third time, <laughs> I met you for a third time. And then uh, that's when we kind of really connected. I uh, talked to you about my story, my background. And yeah, you, you shared about yours. And we end up at that Peter place because that's I was walking to go there anyway. So by, I don't know, some grace uh, of God, <laughs> we connected. And yeah, it, it was the spark of a great... Uh, relationship right. yeah absolutely no thank you um well absolutely thank you for your kind words right back at you you know people tend to think when they are in the audience or participating uh that they are anonymous but really as presenters like you can see everybody and you can see everything as, as you know being on the other side and I really appreciate your participation I appreciate you being into it uh, and I appreciated you um and the community of uh, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs uh, that were attending that boot camp um, that week, which really is an MBA in a week, right? Because you have yeah. a lot of pre work to do beforehand. You um, have a very intensive week where you work the business plan. And um, yeah, you all brought it and you lifted mm -hmm. up uh, your colleagues. And it was a really, really, uh, it was on honestly my pleasure to be able to present um, with Bryce and kind of work with you all and yes. yeah, connect, um, have those meaningful connections and be in a place where. Uh, those collisions happen. So yeah, when we're, I think we were like walking down the street and you're like, Samantha? And it was raining. It was like, you know, just Oh raining, yeah, raining, pouring raining. rain. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Because, um, yeah, because I was just out of context. I was like, oh, hey, dude. And I'm like, we're going to go get, uh, we're going to Oxford's Tap House. Like, come. And you're like, I'm going to get a, a donair. And it was like, oh, like Oxford's Tap House, you bring it in. So you grabbed it and yeah. you came in, joined our colleagues. And yeah, we got to chit chat. So you know, I always tell my students that learning is repeated exposure to same or similar materials, but I think friendship yeah. can kind of be like that too, in the sense that like, you know, you get to meet people <laughs> in different contexts and, you know, talk about things in school, um, outside school, like things that you're passionate with. So I was just, um, I was so, so yeah. impressed isn't, um, isn't the right word, but that's the one that comes to mind. But I was just like, yes, you are an awesome human. I would love to talk with you more, learn more about you um, for, you know, fourth or fifth or sixth time. And also, yes. you know, record it for our management learners. So thank you so, so much for, you know, being here. And I'm really interested to hear about, um, about your story on um, really, I want to hear all of it. And I want to hear starting with, okay, so now today, Yes. We're going to go backwards to go forwards. Um, but you, we met uh, when you were transitioning out of the Canadian Armed Forces into your entrepreneurial endeavor. So yes. I want to hear first a bit about what brought you into the Canadian Armed Forces and what kind of roles and journeys uh, kind of brought you uh, to when we met in June. Huh. Okay, so I, I will have to go back back in uh, back where I, I was a kid. So I was born and raised in Montreal. Uh, so from uh, an immigrant family uh, that immigrated from Haiti. So uh, at that time, growing up, we didn't have much. Uh, we didn't know anything about how to handle money and finances and, and things like that. So um, money and finance was a taboo subject. We never really talked about it. But hey, we were living good. We're scraping by. You know, I, I was I, I used to be a, uh, like sleep on floors at my cousin's place because, you know, they, they, they were living in tiny apartments. But hey, man, it was family. Right. And it, we had that sense of uh, community and we stick we stuck together uh, through the uh, what we call the, uh, the the hardship. Right. So fast forward, I was going through school and everything started working. So I was always broke because I was trying to. You know, impress people, like dress a certain way to say, hey, man, you, you have to be rich to show that you have money. And <laughs> I accumulated so much debt as a student. Uh, credit cards, was, it was easy. Just apply and you get some money and you pay. Essentially, I never paid it back. So now um, I'm out of school. Um, 25. So 25, married, a kid on the way. 
have a, an unimaginable amount of debt, uh, student debt, plus no cash, no investment, and zero knowledge about how to handle my money. So what ended up happening, my wife joined the military first because her brother was serving. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, it's not for me. And then she did it anyway. And when she came back from um, her basic course, basic training, I'm like, you know what? If we were to move, uh, I will have to find something. Um, you know, there's no way out. And I, I, I joined the military and see if I could find a place. And I didn't like it at first. But then after working, going through basic training and training, uh, and finding that sense of brotherhood, teamwork, uh, and team cohesion, one one team, one goal, uh, it really was appealing to me. And through all of that, I was uh, starting to learn about investing, how to manage your money, because I was paying off my debt, be more responsible in a sense. And I'm like, man, I'm getting really good at it. So I was trying to find a way to say, hey, why not get paid for it? And that what basically was the start of my entire entrepreneurship journey, which we, we fast forward 13 years later, uh, which is today, uh, and there was that Princess Trust that was part of the, uh, well, kind of the, uh, for the veterans that I applied for. And I say, hey, I, I want to start a business in the financial industry. I'm, I'm already licensed. And I see how can I do this? Who can I meet to make this work? And through that, because um, at that point, uh, I was saying, hey, I want to retire from the military. I want to do this um, as, as a business and really help the community learn about money and finance and uh, help them in, invest for their future and whatnot. So uh, th through that experience at Princess Trust, it really opened my my eyes and see, hey, man, uh, <laughs> you really need a solid foundation and a team behind you to make this work. You can't do this alone. So, yeah. Thank you. It's uh, one thing that you said there that I really want to point out is that you started kind of with like a problem um, in the yeah. sense that you found yourself, you know, um, with the debt at 25, baby on the way, married. And then you were, um, you joined the armed forces and you, you saw, oh crap, how am I going to pay this back? So you empowered yourself while working to mm -hmm. learn. And I love what you said here. You said, I got good. And then I figured out how to get paid for it. Yeah. And I think Sometimes, um, sometimes we have it backwards. We want to get paid for it. And then we think that we'll get good at it. So I really <laughs> like your order of operations. Um, you know, build a skill set, find a problem, find something that is either a pain point for you, a pain point yeah. for others, something that you care deeply about and learn and learn and learn. And then there will be a way in which you can turn that into uh, something that you get paid for. And so that's yeah. another reason uh, why, you know, what do we, we say? It's like, um, you know, put up and shut up, right? Just <laughs> get, get right? going, get after it. So. <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure, and I'm sure it might, might have been the same way for you going through, uh, through school and, I say, hey, I want to be a professional. How, uh, how can I do this? You probably did a lot of sacrifice too to get where you're at today, right? Yeah, um, I, I will. I mean, yes, and, and thank you. I will say that it, um, you know, being there's also a lot of dumb luck with it. So I always love to look back and be like, okay, what was what was uh, something that you know either it was done by accident or done on purpose and what was the results mm -hmm. and what can I learn from it so I can ensure that I can increase the chances of like doing that on purpose and having another good reaction versus just kind of like <laughs> boggling along so yeah, yeah if I could go back to my younger self you know 15 20 years ago uh and kind of say hey listen get good then get paid like get good and focus on like how can I get better how can I get better I would love to have heard that because you know I tended to look for markers of success um you mm -hmm. know whether it's financial or a job title or this or that by something that somebody was going to give me versus something that I was going to go out and earn myself and I think it's 
such a small nuance, but it's something that's so important because it's like, we can focus on our effort and we can focus on getting better mm -hmm. and good. And then the outputs will follow versus if you are trying to make the end, the goal, yes. you know, <laughs> when, when you get there, you're kind of like, oh crap, now I got to get good because now I'm here. So I love that you're laughing because you're laughing because possibly, <laughs> let me know if I'm right or wrong. Before we got on here, um, you and I were talking about how it really is the journey and it's it's not the destination. Exactly. It, it is the journey because uh, we we always been taught that, you know, have a goal. I'm like, yeah, this is the end result. But at some point in time, you never get there because they say, what's next? What's next? So, you know, uh, it's always changing. We're always adapting and evolving. So we have to enjoy the journey. It, it, it is all about that when we talk about success, uh, but more so is doing things on purpose and according to your values. That's extremely yeah. important. Yeah. And the good thing is if you live and, you know, go by your values, you're often attracting other people that have similar yeah. values or some values that align and you can kind of build your team that way. So yeah. one thing that you mentioned is building your team and filling in the gaps. Now, looking at the group as a collective and learning with the different businesses that the different entrepreneurs um, in the Princess Trust Operation Entrepreneur um, there was, you know, a woman who's a bookkeeper and studying to do bookkeeping. Um, yes. There are people that are doing leisure activities, um, people that are involved in uh, the electric car business servicing, yes. <laughs> um, people that are doing, um, you know, building uh, houses, um, people that are taking down trees. So even within that ecosystem, you know, I, I see like there's a financial advisor, there's a bookkeeper, like there's, there's a team that's going to be coming around together. Okay. Um, how important, or, you know, can you share a bit about what it's, what, what it was like going through with a cohort and, you know, whether or not, yeah, I would just like to hear a little bit about that, the cohort and kind of um, from the inside things that maybe I didn't get an option, an opportunity to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's uh, thank you for letting me sharing this um, to, to see the, the, the passion in what people wanted to accomplish. Uh, it was that level of sometimes uncertainty is some of them like, Oh, am I good enough to actually do this? Cause they have mm. a plan. They don't know how to get there or who to talk to. So, but hence the reason why we all joined that program, we, we don't really know what we're doing until actually doing it. Uh, but we were looking for some sort of guidance. So talking with all of us, but we had that same, same um, way of, teamwork we wanted to have people that are better than us by filling the gap and with that we, we shared we bonded on the fact that we're all in the military so we know what what it takes to to accomplish a mission it's always the mission mm -hmm. the mission first and we will get there by any means necessary so they they, they have that those projects at heart and, and and they understand the value of talking to people and really bonding on a on a deeper level and we even sometimes shared about our traumas mm. uh, which really reinforced our bond and, and it was only for a week that we attended there but now we created uh, what we call referrals so hey you have a gardener you have a bookkeeper say hey, you know someone that you could connect to and say hey let me give some so-and-so a call so that 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 was the kind of the background experience that you didn't really saw, Samantha. But Thank yeah, you. it it was that sense of belonging. You know, we will get there eventually. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll get there eventually. And I love I love the referrals because when you when somebody asks you for a referral or you see somebody that needs a referral, um, what you are doing when you give a referral is you are putting your reputation out there and you're saying this person will take care of you like I would take care of you. So like exactly. you said, you have that common bond. You are lifting each other up. Absolutely. That is the strongest referral to be like, hey, um, they got you, like, you know, and being able to kind of lift each other up. And that is a skill yeah. set um, on its on its own of collaboration uh, that I think our management learners can really pick up on, whether mm. you're in a class, um, uh, you're in a, you're all in a class for a reason, like you have a shared bond, 
And then um, when you leave that class, you have the opportunity to continue that share bond and, you know, leverage each other. I always joke that like <laughs> the people that like I want on my team are the ones that, you know, will, you know, be in a meeting, um, be freaked out, go to the bathroom and like text me on the toilet. Right. Like, that's <laughs> like oh! and like same, same here. Like that's what I want on my team. So we have like our team by circumstance and then we have our team that we can build. And it's like the, okay, like I got you. Like I want that, um, and it's just so empowering because if we want to feel good and, you know, make an impact and, you know, achieve our goals and lift everybody else up, mm -hmm. there's going to be some scary points and yes. that's okay because it's, it's not all on you. It's all on our team. Like it's, it's helping each other. So I, I love, um, I suspected that it was possibly like that behind the scenes, but I'm really happy uh, to kind of confirm that. <laughs> yeah. And, and one thing I want to mention is mm -hmm. do it scare, do it scare, do it anyway. Uh, uh, that's one of my uh, my motto do, do it anyway just even though you're scared just do it what's the worst that could happen right <laughs> uh, absolutely listen um one thing that I don't know if I told you or if it were to come out um possibly because it's not quote like a professional thing to admit mm. but I um you know the last two and a half years during COVID I you know I had taught a lot previously and then yeah. going online I I was I was scared to be back in person. I wanted it. I wanted it so bad, but it's, yeah. it's different. It's vulnerable. It's connection. So, mm -hmm. you know, for as much as, you know, um, I, I can just say that I took away so much from that day um, and from being mm -hmm. part of the project because, um, not, you know what I mean, from the presentation that I like, thank you. It helped reinstate that fire, reinstate some like um, uh, confidence, yeah. right? To put yourself out there and to, to connect. Yeah, and so uh, be be willing to be vulnerable. Yeah, be right. be willing to be vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so okay. Um, I don't I don't know the order of operations. So let's. I want to know a bit about. No, I want to know everything that you are doing now. So to bring us to the present day, um, yeah. it's my understanding that you recently. Um, successfully completed um your service in the canadian armed forces and yep, you correct. um so what is the term of reference what should i be saying like you're now a former canadian armed forces member yes well we'll call it veteran I'm veteran, veteran pardon me thank you yeah, we'll okay see. i wasn't quite sure when i could use that so thank you um veteran <laughs> and i should have started the podcast with this but truly jude uh, thank you for your service, truly. And let me just elaborate. Um, my Oma uh, was a Dutch immigrant uh, from oh. um, from Holland, and she told me from a very young age, whenever we would see um, armed forces, Canadian armed forces, that those are the people that saved her. Those are the people that dropped rations um, over her village or over mm. her city. Um, they would, you know, they would sneak them back in um, past um, the occupying soldiers and um they really sustained her and her family and she always talked about um the impact of the canadian armed forces so you know from my oma from my family um and to helping us as canadians feel uh safe and free thank you for your service my pleasure it was uh it was an honor serving canada and and well it, it's people right uh it's it's the sense of duty even though it it, it was kind of uh a blessing in a way and that to be able to represent being the first for my family to actually serve from them coming to Canada, the Canada opened their, their arm for them. And yeah, this is my way to giving back. Thank you. So as a recent veteran, mm -hmm. um, uh, what does, um, tell me a bit more about your business, how you turned getting good at something, financial knowledge, and tell me um, what you're building and what you are contributing to now. Oh, well, we could be there for another hour. I know, I know, I know we have hard stop, but I, <laughs> I want to hear all, all about it. <laughs> uh, so pretty much uh, I started back in 2000, well, 2019. Um, but before that, I was just reading books, uh, a lot of uh, networking event of, uh, of people in the industry that, that were like way ahead of, uh, of what I'm try I was trying to accomplish. So I got licensed first as an insurance agent. That's when I learned everything and anything about like my permanent insurance policy, what you have a cash value attached to it that you could use and leverage 
for investments. It's a powerful tool that not a lot of people know about. Uh, so from then, from there, I was like, oh, people should know about this. But there's other things that I'm not able to to talk about because I'm not licensed. So keep on learning, studying. Uh, fast forward two years, 2021, get licensed for, for mortgages. So I, I was able to help people with mortgages. Now understand the real estate aspect of it, which I, I found fascinating. So I was learning with that while serving in the military, all of that. And to this day being uh, right now, uh, today, uh, partnered with uh, an accountant and he's my mentor. He's been uh, in the industry for oh, man, 30 years. So probably uh, it's as long as I've been alive, to be honest. Um, but yeah, he showed me the ins and outs of real estate investing because he's doing it himself. And he had his own company, which I partnered with. That's how I started to really grow now. Uh, so uh, all in all, the all everything that I'm doing right now is financial planning, um, real estate investment, uh, typical investing, so your mutual funds or segregated funds, things of that nature, living benefits. Uh, so really the entire 360 degrees of, of, of financial planning of, of a life for a professional. So uh, my main, main target are professionals, managements, uh, and, and people that are business owners, right, that, that, are, that want to, to build a future for their family. So uh, that that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I added the uh, lawyers. So I, I've you, you have to know something. It, it it is so powerful. The the network. Your network is your net worth. You have to connect with really interesting and powerful people because that could change your life pretty quickly. I I agree. I will admit though, I am not the most. How do I say this? Networking doesn't come easily to me. And I, I suspect that some of my students out there, some of the management learners, uh, maybe it doesn't come easy to them either. So my first question is, does networking come easy to you? And regardless of your answer, uh, do you have any tips for you know management learners or, or myself, uh, but management learners uh, to kind of help build that skill of networking? <laughs> uh, no, I'm an introvert by nature. I'm like fully introvert but what i realized is there's always a way to be a better version of yourself so my always what i say is be willing to be vulnerable but also put yourself out there don't be afraid to be out there right because uh, you're just one converse, a conversation away from changing your entire life right sometimes you're trying to accomplish something and you don't know how to do it but it's not necessarily how, it's who do you know that will help you get there. So uh, what I did to, for that, I, I had to be <laughs> able to talk to people because I, I, I couldn't speak. Even, I speak French and English, so sometimes I, I kind of <laughs> mix, uh, make, uh, mix up between the two. Uh, but I've learned with Toastmasters. Toastmasters was a phenomenal uh, like like organization that I, you know I, I've learned to how to present how to you know talk to people deliver a speech impromptu speech answer hard questions uh but within a, a scope of a, a of a subject so yeah you can I can handle conversation better now and really it it, it took a, a lot of me to be willing to to go out there and speak in front of total strangers so that's my tip find something that could help you get yourself out there uh, toastmasters is, is great for that right and there's no judgment there no judgment and that's something that students can be a part of uh they don't have to wait until they're a certain no nope. certain something no nope. they they can learn at any time um they, there is a chapter probably in every city i'm pretty sure there is one in halifax um yeah just find out around and it's usually the the first time it's free to attend and i think it's pretty much free i never paid for that <laughs> so, perfect. Yeah. no perfect no it's um really important and plus it's it's always difficult because when 
you know, people come to me and they're like, what do I need to do or buy or say or do? And it's like, there's so much, but it's like, Hey, take, um, take the opportunities to get in, you know, figure it out for yourself. Um, if you need to invest some money, um, you know, do it, um, do it if you're able to do it, if, um, if it makes sense at the time, but oftentimes you can at least get in like wait in the water, um, for, for free, um, or for very low cost for referral mm -hmm. uh, initially, but yeah, go, go try it out. I love it. Like you said, um, if you're scared, do it scared, go just, yeah. just try like, just, why not? <laughs> man, the, the, num the number of, I cannot count the number of times that I, act a fool because uh they say hey I, I didn't know what i was doing nobody knows what they're doing come on no. like even the most professional that people that are they say are rich and successful man they don't know what they're doing they have people for that yeah right? you, you have your team right yeah. you know your team you build your team you support each other and yeah the the, the big secret here is uh is that we're all making it up uh along as we yeah. go along the way <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's given their like menu and they're like, okay, pick your entree. You're like, okay, I'm gonna this. <laughs> pick your, you know, pick your dessert. Okay. Like right. we're going to do that. No, like we don't know. And that on the flip side of that is like, we don't know, um, you know, what resources, what opportunities, what time we have. So, you know, yep. making the most out of it at the end of the day, I want to be, you know, wherever I'm at. And I want to have that like smile and the satisfaction that I tried that, you yeah. know, I tried regardless of what happens. I want to be like, <laughs> Yeah, I tried. <laughs> right. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Versus versus the other is like, I wish I would have tried. Right. I, I don't want to live with the I wish I would have. Yeah. So it's no regrets. Regrets is the worst thing that could happen to you. Um just, just do it. I will never say it enough. Just do it. Put yourself out there. Exposure, exposure. Yeah, just go do something out of the blue, spontaneous. You know, you could you could find something new about yourself. You always learning, you always getting better, right? Yeah, I, absolutely. And like, how do I? My one of my colleagues is really good at this in the sense that he will be around and he will he will make him his self known and he'll work on his own thing, but he's present. And when you're present, um, both in, you know, physical nature, but also when you're just a present human, uh, you tend to attract things and tend, things tend to happen. Collisions tend to happen. Uh, oh, I'm actually talking about Philippe. So you met Philippe at um, the Oxford Tap House. Yes. Right? The one of the reasons I met him was through, through collisions, right? And oh. so you find you find your people. And sometimes through collisions, you, you bounce off and you never see the person again. But other times during collisions, um, fun things happen. And you know, now if you were to reach out to Philippe or he would reach out to you, like you guys, you know, you know, you know each other. Right. And it, it's right? a small world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one, I, I don't, I want to leave the networking thing in a moment, but I, and not before I ask you this. Okay. So students tend to think networking me is like agenda driven. Like I'm going to meet this person and do this thing. And it's going to help me in this way. Do you have um, an alternative or like, what are your thoughts about networking about the purpose of it? Is it to know the people or is there always like a hard defined, I'm going to meet you and we're going to do this? Uh, yeah. Uh, when I first started, I thought, it, I thought it was, okay, this is what I do. Uh, let's connect. We're going to do business together. But no, it is not that at all. Networking is knowing the person you're talking to. Get to know them on a personal level. You know, business will come after. Yeah. Know the person. If, see if there's a need for what you're doing, <laughs> right? It's, if, if they're not qualified, don't waste your time. But at least you have a friend because that could be a source of referral, right? Absolutely. No, yeah. just start to make friends, a new friend. It, it, it could be something that you may not serve, be able to, to help them or serve them, but they may be able to serve you, who knows, right? That by the, the 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 six degree of separation of the people that they know, right? Do it yeah. intentionally. Like you want to make a new friend, have that personal connection, and say, "Hey, let's have a drink and just talk." And that then tell me about you. This is this is the the basic nature of uh, making friends and influence people. You have to be willing to um to 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 open yourself to to that talked about yourself your or anything personal but you know w within reason right <laughs> you don't know if a person can uh, you have to create that connection first but yeah oh completely um all right so i'm 
just want to take a peek and you had mentioned that during your time from 2019 to when we're here, uh, again, getting good, um, learning about, you know, how you did it piece by piece by piece. So I really like how you, you know, were interested in insurance and you got licensed. So you learned the skill. So it's like, you know, interesting, learning, mastering, you know, developing. Now it's a part of your tool set. Yep. Is there part of your skill set um, that you kind of can I identify or multiple tools from your time in the Canadian Armed Forces that you use either day to day or that you're just like, oh, I'm so grateful that I had that experience that I can, you know, utilize now and pull upon. Like, you know, that that skill sets with you. Uh, time management. Mm -hmm. Yes. Time management is a huge skill and also working under pressure. Yeah. Is that uh, sometimes there's uh, some hard on some some hard deadline that you have to respect uh and also be not be late for appointments so time management blood time blocking now, that was huge in the military uh they you had to be there <laughs> or else you you get penalized right uh so that that was a skill that was easily transferable uh but also the working under pressure you know sometimes it, it could be lonely at times right and you, you you're trying to do so many things at the same time uh it could be lonely but you did that pressure you you are able to to go through adversity and say hey man i'm gonna get this done by any means necessary yeah i thank you yeah time my goodness yeah some of my students will be like um i oh, i need to learn time management i'm like oh goodness i feel like that's something that is I don't know about you, but for me, it's just, it's time blocking. It's getting the tactics, employing the tactics. And then it's yep. about discipline. And then it's about learning and reflecting and being like, okay, mm -hmm. what did I do well? What did I did not do well? Um, so do you have any tips or tricks for perhaps management learners on um, time management or pressure um, if they haven't um, had the opportunity to serve um, our country? Well, if they don't have that <laughs> the opportunity, no, no, for sure. Uh, there's always... Um, you what what I found that was useful is when you make a, a block of time, like let's say an hour, uh, put some task in there uh, mm -hmm. and really commit to to that block of uh, that, that time block. Don't get any distraction because uh, sometimes we try to multitask. There's no such thing as multitasking. Right? Yeah. You you have to be intentional. You allow, um, let's say, for studying, say 30 minutes, let's say 20 minutes, just focus studying. You put your phone away uh, and you could really get this done. And you will find out with time that you are able to accomplish a lot more in one hour by really focusing on one task at a time. So for the students who are, because we're heading into finals and a lot yeah. of them are like, I am going to spend all day Saturday learning accounting. I'm going to go <laughs> to the library and, and they tell me this and I'm like this. I'm like, oh, that's no, awesome. no, it's, it so never works. I, I used to be like that. I was like last minute. I was like, oh my gosh, I have a big project to do. I uh, completely forget about it. Or I pushed it to the side till the last minute. Never works. Trust me, you 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 will fail more often than not. So, uh, no, uh, like I said, Small and, yeah, multiple times, piece by piece, a little bit every single day. Even when I uh, go through my licensing and, and all that, it's a lot, a lot, because yeah. I only have like three months to get this done. So, I uh, really had to focus on okay, every single day have. 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Okay, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to study this part, this part, and, and do practice exam all within that that week. Uh, so less social media, less TV. You're, Put your phone away. Yeah. Have small chunks. Do the chunks, chunks and then go on to the rest of your life. Go gym, work, blah, blah, like whatever you need to do, small chunks. Yeah. Or maybe it's you know a chunk and then go for a walk and then chunk and go for a walk versus you know when you sit yourself down in the library for eight hours you might get the same amount of work done in eight hours and you get done in one hour and you feel exhausted and you're not quite sure what happens so no mm -hmm. I love that that deliberate deliberate approach um and the other thing I want to point out is mm -hmm. that for <clears throat> learners and I, I hear this um from a student yesterday she's like oh I'm in my I'm taking a fifth year because I didn't know um, what I wanted to do. And I got in there and I did architecture. And then I realized I didn't want to do that, but I'm glad I did it because I learned this. And then the language started turning a little bit. I don't want 
say negative, but like she beat herself up. She's like, oh, I see my friends. I see them graduating next or soon. And I see myself and I feel behind. And I'm like, girl, like run your race. And I'm like, as like, I'm back in school now. I'm back in school um, for the last like two and a half years. I'll be in school for another like two and a half, possibly longer. I don't really know. I'll probably wow. always be learning because- right. Because it's like, that's how you learn and grow, whether it's formal or informal, I want to be the best version of myself. And part of that is education. Yeah. So for her, um, what I want to kind of talk to her and talk to others is that you build skill sets, you build, you build tools, and you didn't leave those in the Canadian Armed Forces. They're here no. with you. And it exactly. actually sounds like they're helping you like, and that, that helped you, like your past is helping you, like you were better for your past in yeah. my office. That's that's no, it's absolutely true. You, everything that you learn uh, through through life will always serve you. Uh, my biggest thing is always be a student of the game, be a constant student. And, and if you're not sure, seek mentorship. You'll be amazed with what uh, some experienced people could really taught you. you know, it, it it will really teach you. I mean, is. And be a student of the game. Be willing to always apply in your your skills. They're never lost, right? And you say, I may never use it. It's not true, right? You never know. Never know. All right. I have a um, few questions that I want to ask. And I want to start off with any books or podcasts that you would recommend to management learners. Oh, uh, for management learner, I would say the School of Greatness by uh, Louis Owls. Mm -hmm. So he interviews a lot of, uh, well, they're, it's mostly American, uh, but leaders and business people that really changing and shaping the world in their own way. So uh, School of Greatness, they, they talk about each, well, everything about managing people, how to really connect uh, their vulnerabilities, uh, mental health as well, because that's that's something that is huge in our line of work uh, and, and and things like that. So Lewis Howes, uh, the School of Greatness would be one. Uh, if you really, uh, and, and then in terms of books, uh, how to make friends and influence people. It's a classic. Mm -hmm. right? like people, yeah, be, uh, and also the, uh, for kind of the investment side of things, which rich that, poor that. Uh, but the one of the biggest thing for, for for us in management and when we go through hardship is uh, the book Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Ooh. Man, that's you. You want to see uh, when you, yeah, you. you no, I don't. No, I, <laughs> you know, I, if you I, know, I, you know. I, I do know. And, um, you know, his book's great. His audio book where he um, will narrate part of the, like there's a little podcast in between each of the chapters. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, it's, um, I, I challenge somebody to listen to that and not be fired up and wanted to go out there and uh, yeah. listen or read that fire out and like, go get, go get after it. Right. That's right. That's why I'm saying, man, just, just do it. There's no excuses. Like what's stopping you. Right. You're willing to do it. It, it. It all starts between our two ears. Uh, we are in our head 24-7, but sometimes we uh, we have to get that dark cloud out and say, hey, I'm going to do this. Yeah, um, completely opposite, but not opposite of Goggins. Uh, you'll, I, I promise I'll swing it back. Mm -hmm. I, I met yoga on uh, Wednesday yeah. and we're doing inversions and she's like now this is the time in class like it's kind of we break from this um the flow we break from the music and we do inversions uh, we're working on handstands this um this month and um every time it's like you cannot be thinking about something um other than you know being in your body being present being at the task at hand when you are upside down <laughs> and i love it for that reason because you know as you're going your brain is like what are you doing why are you doing it and you do it anyways and you are immersed and yes. so you can get out of the thinking brain and into the feeling brain and you learn so much so you know, while yoga and David Goggins <laughs> likely aren't always in the same um, <laughs> right. Agree. Uh, they both kind of have that that presence and that like yeah. just just do it. That's it. That's uh, that's uh, that's all there is to it. That's life. We, we go through uh, ups and downs. <laughs> just do it. Um, Jude, 
Lefleur, uh, what advice do you have for management learners? I know you've provided a lot of uh, really great advice throughout this, and we've woven in um, some other advice from mentors and friends. But if you were to leave our management learners with kind of one more nugget, what would that be? Commit. Commit to, to, your, to your craft. Whatever you feel you're, you're entering, commit to it. Just be obsessed about being better, better version of yourself. And so that way, show that you care about people. There, there's so much power that, that could come out of helping somebody else fulfill their, their, their dreams or whatever that case may be. Be committed, committed to your people and your craft. Love it. Agreed. Jean the floor. What Saint is Fleur. your LaFleur? Saint Pardon Fleur. me. Saint Fleur. Oh my God, I said LaFleur. <laughs> you know See? why? Because I was practicing in my head. I got in my head and I needed to get out of it. My goodness. See, we all make mistakes. Exactly, right? But we learn from it. So, dude, it's hilarious. With my students right now, there's this one student, his name's Jack, um, but I've called him Jake like uh, every other time. So I was like, I'm right, I'm wrong. I'm right, I'm wrong. And like my, my student Brie is like, ah. she's like, it's just, you're so human. And it's like, you try and you're not mm -hmm. good at names. You'll remember that like Jack, you know, participated in this and did this. He's, she's like, but you're just horrible with names. And so I don't know, maybe perhaps that's uh, what I'm going for is charm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, but my students are like laughing. They're like, I can't believe you did this to your podcast guest. You do this to us all the time. And it's not, it's not intentional. So thank you, Jude St. Fleur. Um, what is your definition of success? Ah, <laughs> so doing things that fulfills your purpose, right? It's always your, your purpose. So what is your purpose on this earth, right? So you fulfill that by helping others um, like you feel a need for them right help them with their problems that's the definition of success money is just a byproduct of that right that's you you see you fulfill you serve with intent and uh, you, you serve with a purpose and you elevate people with you that's success i couldn't agree more Jude, if any of the management learners want to reach out to you, um, are they are they able to maybe um, you know message you on LinkedIn or send yeah. you an email? Yeah. Absolutely, they could uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, under Jude Saint Fleur. I'm sure Samantha will uh, uh, you'll be willing to share my uh, my, my contacts. Uh, but also, uh, it's you could always uh, send me an email at Jude at TriforceWealth.com. Perfect. We'll link both of those down in the show notes. Um, Jude at TriforceWealth.com and uh, your LinkedIn. Jude, thank you. thank you so much for your time and being part of our podcast. Hey, thank you. It's been my pleasure, Samantha. It's always fun talking to you. My gosh, man, what a time. <laughs> won't be the last. Thanks, Jude. All right. Bye-bye.